All right, let's rock and roll. The premier poker tournament on the planet began as a numbers game. 2,576 players, 240 poker tables, seven grueling days. Let's play poker. Now the magic number is nine. Nine players remain, each with a chance to be the one to capture the richest prize in poker or sports history. Five million dollars. It was such a life-changing experience. We can gamble. This is war. We are playing for five million dollars. Think we're playing tiddlywinks? Winning the World Series of Poker, being able to say in one week I was the best player. That's where I'm. I need an ace, baby. Come on, baby. Yeah. Now only two numbers matter. <laughs> one champion, five million dollars. The end is near. The final table is now. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the grand finale of the 2004 main event of the World Series of Poker presented by Miller High Life. For 35 years, the Horseshoe Casino has housed the one event that guaranteed we'll be there in a hot minute. Reality, the main event champion forever remembered in the gallery of winners. Players like Johnny Chan, the last man to win back-to-back -back championships, and Stu Unger, who won the main event three times over 18 years. Now nine players remain, vying for poker greatness and a record $5 million. Hello everybody, I'm Lon McCarron alongside Norman Chad. Of the players still standing, only Dan Harrington can already be considered a legend of the game. Tonight he's sitting at his fourth main event final table dating back to 1987. He won it all in 95, and he just keeps getting stronger, Norm. In fact, Lon, his last two years are mind-boggling. Last year there were 839 players here, this year 2,576. Making it to the final table in back-to-back -back years against those numbers arguably is the greatest accomplishment in World Series history. And if he wins it all, there is no argument. Right now, Dan sits in the middle of the pack with about 2.2 million chips. The short stack at the table, the screaming Swede, Matthias Anderson, going around the table in ascending order. Mike McLean has almost 900,000. Al Crux remarkably has made the main event final table three times in the last 15 years. David Williams at age 23 could become the youngest winner ever of the main event. Glenn Hughes is just ahead of Dan Harrington, fourth in chips. And Josh Aria, third place right now with 3.2 million. And second youngest at the table is Matt Dean, who is also second in chip count, behind Greg Raymer, who has one-third of the chips in play at this final table. The blinds right now at this championship table, 25,000 and 50,000 and a 5,000 chip ante from each player. It's a new day in poker line. Four of the nine at the final table are 20-something, five of the nine qualified online. Mike McLean on the Miller High Life pocket cam looking at aces. Good morning to you, final table. When you're short stacked, there's no greater sight than pocket aces, Lon. McLean comes out with 150,000. Josh Aria with a couple of rags and all. He does hate folding. He's a young Sammy Farhawk. Loves to see flops. Loves being aggressive. Over to our chip leader, Greg Raymer. A pair of tens in the hole. We can barely get to his cards on the other side of the chips. Get to the glasses on first, Greg. <laughs> and Greg Raymer will make a raise to 500,000. Action two, action Dan Harrington, who declines the action. Now back to McLean. Well, McLean's just thinking, how quickly can I double up with aces? All in. And he's going to try exactly that. Call. And Greg Raymer will call him. And Mike McLean all in for his tournament life, a four to one favorite right now with his pocket aces against Raymer's ten. And our first flop of this championship table. Wow, what lucky star is Raymer born under? <laughs> Three tens. That's one pained look for a man with pocket aces. Oh, Mike McLean on the turn now. No help with the eight of spades. So to stay alive in this tournament, Mike McLean will need a river ace. If a nine comes up, they both have a straight and there'd be a split pot. River card's a king, and that's going to close it out for Mike McLean. He represented the agony of defeat last year. Now in 2004, he is the first man gone from our final table. That's just bad luck. I you deserve that. A touch of class from Fossil Man there. He knows he was blessed on that hand. And there is Cheryl Raymer enjoying the action as her husband keeps his firm grip on the final table in this No Limit Texas Hold'em main event. Here are the Miller High Life rules for 
Texas Hold'em. Each player is first dealt two down cards. Eighth play. River for a straight. Now the river card. Oh, it is an eight. Greg Raymer makes his queen high straight and knocks off a second player here at the championship table. So that's what Matthias Anderson sounds like when he loses an all-in. So Fossil Man living large, knocking off two straight players in hands in which he started as a big underdog. Anderson part of a big contingent of foreign players at the World Series, but the only one to make the final table goes away in eighth place. Just downstairs from the final table in the vault, they are preparing the $5 million in first prize money, loading all that cash into cardboard boxes, as is the tradition here at the Horseshoe for the World Series of Poker. And they need a lot more boxes this year, Norm. <laughs> The Toyota Chip Town shows Greg Raymer almost 10 million chips. Matt Dean in second. Al Crux, the only one under a million. I talked to Al Crux's son just before we started, Brian, and he told me his father was going to sit back early and let everyone else chop each other up, but he's getting pretty short stacked. The pocket sixes look pretty good. Good enough for a bet of 250000 from Al Crux. His wife and family looking on intently from the bleachers. Action over now to Greg Raymer. He's got an ace and a king. I think he might be in this hand. No. Fossil Man eyeing his next prey. Asking for a count on the chips of Al Crux. 865 total. Greg Raymer will bet 865, and what that does effectively will force Al Crux to go all in if he wants to call. The rest of the table. Folding. Man, getting now lucky those Alfred first two hands and then now having this and guy. He's, gonna go all in. he's just getting gifted. Time, trying to take out Hopefully and something interesting comes up. Going to the flop, just about even, and it's 4-9. Jack Raymer gets no help. Crux now a 4-1 to one favorite as we go to the turn. Oh, it's an ace. Raymer now in the lead with two aces. Fossil Man is on fire. This is an incredible line. Al Crux down to his last card. He can still win with a six, or he's picked up a spade draw. Oh, he got the spade. <laughs> Who, of course, has become somewhat of a mentor for David Williams during this tournament. 
David's got his game face on and a couple of fives in the pocket. He wants to play him. And David now the short stack at the table, about a million and a half chips total. Comes out with 120,000. Josh Arie next to Axe. All right. With a student ace king. 500. Al Crux gets out of the way. So does Dan Harrington, Glenn Hughes. Now the action back to David Williams. To call this, David Williams has to put in about one third of his remaining chips. And that's exactly what David Williams does. Check in the dark. No, right. Dark check. Williams checks blind, a la Marcel. And now the flop. Oh, and a set of fives for David Williams. Action to Josh, who's picked up a pair of aces. Oh, <laughs> oh the immediate call from David Williams with his set. <laughs> Josh is disgusted. David Williams, who is all in, has command of this hand. That's why you always go to the flop with a pair. And Shirley Williams loves what she sees. Uh, David goes over to share the jubilation with Marcel Lou. But this hand is not over yet. We've got the turn. And oh, what a card to hit Josh. Three aces, but Williams with a full house. What a joke. He's got 1.5 million and he calls 500,000 with two fives. So, what a joke is Josh's table-side manner. Josh still can knock Williams out of here with a river ace, king, or six. Williams wins the hand. And the Williams entourage going nuts. And David going over to Marcel. And acknowledging the dark chip. And as he did with Harry Demetriou and Matt Dean in previous sessions, Josh Arie insists on belittling his opponent's play. Don't you? Well, all the money, $5 million worth, has been packed up in the brown cardboard boxes. And security getting ready to bring it upstairs. Greg Raymer with whole cards of Ace Jack will raise 160000 and he goes to his routine, possible on top of his cards, glasses on top of his nose. Over to Dan Harrington, the 1995 champ. Four times down to the final table. Queen nine off suit. And from the big blind, Harrington gets a discount to come into the pot, and he will. Raymer with the advantage with his ace going to the flop. Both players benefit. Raymer's pair of jacks is best. Dan Harrington checks. Greg Raymer bets 300,000. Understandably, he has top pair right now. Harrington's going to be a player. He pushes in 900,000 of his chips. Ay caramba. That's a semi bluff of sorts. <laughs> He's got middle pair. I, I can't believe he thinks he has the best hand. I'll put, I'll put him all in. I'll put him all in. And chip leader Greg Raymer is going to raise, and Harrington pushes in the rest of his chips. He's got a chance to knock somebody else out, except this time, Fossil Man is well ahead in the hand as we go to the turn. Dan Harrington is in deep trouble. Here comes the turn card. The three does not improve anybody's hand. He's looking for that second championship, but Dan Harrington down to his final card. He would need a queen or a nine. It's a nine! I know. I know. I know. From now on, I'm going behind every single pot. I learned my lesson. I saw everyone being behind coming from behind. Fossil Man, a bit shaken here. And unbelievable. Harrington happily stunned that he lives to play another hand. Action Dan. You know I earned the name somehow. And indeed he has. I might be the only player that got to the final table over three decades. What's happening to me is more a miracle than anything else. I'm not playing so much better than everyone else that I deserve to dance my way through all the bullets and get here. I'm trying to win the tournament, but one of the things that helped me tremendously in gambling, I just follow the odds. I got 8% of the chips, my chances of finishing first are 8%. Uh, I think I'm better than the field. All right, so make that double. If you want to be real generous, that's what my chances are. 
And Dan's chances are getting better every minute. He has about 9% of the chips right now, so according to his calculations, 18% chance of winning this. And he's got over 2.3 million chips. Raymer dropping just below the 8 million count now. The action is to Josh Arie now from Atlanta, Georgia, looking at a king nine off suit. And he's going to raise it 225,000. Greg Raymer has been the action man at this table. He'll call. Dan Harrington now. He is on the button, and that's the last to act. Those are rags. I want to raise it. Raise it now. With the rags, Dan. <laughs> 1.2 million. This is action you usually don't see from Action Dan. This is a wow, huge a play. bluff he's trying to execute. Two players are already in. If we couldn't see his whole card, we wouldn't know he's trying to make this type of play. Now over to David Williams. He's got an ace queen unsuited. Those are good cards, but a tough decision for the young player. Three players in before him. One of them, Harrington, just put in a million chips. David will fold. And Harrington has a reputation of being very tight. That's why he can try to execute this bluff. He senses weakness in his opponents, but he's hoping his reputation will help them drop their hands. It worked on REA. That's all you read, Dan? The rest of them aren't red, right? Right. Okay. Now Raymer to act with the ace deuce suited. Inside of Dan Harrington, he's trying to transmit a message to Raymer. Get out! Get out! Dan would be in serious trouble if Raymer did call this. Give him the money. Raymer Poles. Dan Harrington adds a half a million chips to his stack, bluffing with a 6-2 offsuit. Now that's poker, baby. Nice play, and the, obviously the rep earned that one. One name has stood out above all the rest. Because they could have seen David. If that was probably like some other dude, David would have been like, I'm all in. You know what I mean? But he's like, fuck that. <laughs> Covered that ace queen. As the most consistent player throughout the tournament, he made no secret this was his goal, and indeed he did reach the top of the mountain. And for that effort, he'll be driving home a Toyota Tundra double capture. And Daniel is in attendance here today watching the championship table. His mom, of course, never far away. Shouldn't he give her the better seat? <laughs> She's probably got the car. Matt Dean, he only started playing poker within the last year. Here he is at the championship table. Second in chips as we began the day with an ace five off here. And he will raise 225,000 chips. Let's say anyone can win. Anyone but us. Josh Arie with an ace deuce. He's in the big blind and he'll come in for the discounted price. The two players will go to the flop, and here comes five, four. King Matt Dean pairs his five. REA checks. This is why I don't like defending the big blind. That guy hasn't played a hand yet, so you know he's probably got your ace fucking dominated, and then you call because you feel obligated because you're in the big blind. That's a fucking mistake. Think of the big blind is the price you pay to see your next 10 fucking hands. And then you're going to let the best guy at the table with the best cards raise and you're going to call him because you think you got a discount. That's, that's bullshit. And if you got a good can hands or studio connectors or something that could bust them or break them, hell yeah, you call. But don't feel obligated to call in the long run because you can burn fucking chips. And don't be, you got to defend your blinds. Everyone bets the blinds. The next guy in the who's a big blind, everyone's gonna bet their fucking hands, okay? Everyone's blind gets attacked. That's why the blinds don't win the money. It's the button that wins the money. REA working on a straight. And Matt Dean bets 200,000. Just a gut shot straight and Josh calls, he's in the gambling mood. What's new? To the turn card. And there you go. Josh Arie made that gut shot straight. He's got the wheel. Mm. It's the joker for him. And he will spring into action now. What, what's a sloppy bet? 400,000 <laughs> chips spread across the table. Don't want to see his garage looks like. <laughs> Big bet over to Matt Dean. 
He started the day with almost five million chips. And Matt Dean is going to I don't think I would have been out, but apparently it worked for this situation. Well, he's made a move um, here, and unfortunately for Matt Dean. But I mean, come on, Matt Dean, time. it was an easy Judge fold. Judge Angela enjoying the final table action. All in. That's going to push it all in and test Matt Dean's resolve. Well, Matt's been pretty quiet today. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities to play a lot of hands on. And now he's in a horrendous spot. This is tough to call. He could be drawing dead for all he knows. And he will fold. A good but expensive lay down for Matt Dean. He lost about one third of his chips to the very aggressive and very confident Josh Arie. I mean, I'm the best player on the table. I knew that if I kept playing on top of my game and didn't give up, I deserved to be here. Get out, Maria! Get out! I know there's a couple guys out there that are thinking the exact same thing, but these guys have no care. It's gamble, man. It's just such a long time awaited. It's all those hours of experience, all those hands that I've seen. I know what to do. All in the call. I'm gonna get these chips. Yeah, he's won the final. I mean, it's my time. He may be the best player, as he says, but in terms of how he acts at the table, he's not the best person. Josh has a lot of growing up to do, Ron. But Josh has made the biggest strides today. He began the final table with about 3.2 million. He's added about 2.5 million to that stack. On the other end of the spectrum, Matt Dean began today second in chips, and he has been dropping like the mercury in December since then. Indeed, Matt Dean, just being blinded off, keeps dropping in chips. And finally, he's gotten involved in a couple of hands. So Dean with an ace-10 off suit over to David Williams with a couple of aces. You know, Matt Dean's got involved in the wrong hands. We saw it happen against Aria, and now he gets raised by David Williams, 500,000. Some people might slow play aces. We haven't seen David Williams slow play anything. Williams bets and calls his hands quite quickly and quite decisively. It's his style. And Matt Dean will call the raise from David Williams and will go to the flop. It's 8-3-8, eight, eight. no help for Dean. And Mr. Williams with a hammer lock on this hand. And he comes out with 300,000 chips. And Matt Dean, as you said, no help on the flop and very little hope in this hand if he wants to stay in. I got a feeling we're not going to see him stay in. A call. Matt Dean, Goodness. all in, oh, and in trouble. Oh boy, he got impatient here, Lon. Matt Dean picked a couple of bad spots against Aria and Williams to get aggressive. Matt Dean only has a one in a hundred chance. I guess he was short. This tournament. The turn card's a three that seals the deal. David Williams wins the hand. Matt Dean eliminated. David Williams continues his rush today. A great run for Matt Dean, the school teacher. Handled himself well. One year ago, he watched the World Series of Poker on TV, took up the game, and now goes out here this year in seventh place. Amazing. And here come the boxes upon boxes of money. Five million dollars cash. Thank you. And they are stacking it up within sight, but just out of reach of the remaining six players. Most who have been in this position say it doesn't affect their play, but you cannot ignore that stack. It is prettier than hell. If Josh wins that money, maybe he can buy a shirt he can wear to a nice restaurant. And that is just a winner's share of the purse here at this year's World Series of Poker. Five million dollars. Yeah. When you won, did you just carry it all out in a big bag or what happened? Yeah, I had to reduce it to a uh, check. I bet they wouldn't take a check in the old days. Johnny Moss, Doyle, give me the cash. Well, Dan knows the old days. I think his photograph might be on some of that money. Greg Raymer, our chip leader, with an ace-queen offsuit. He will bet 200,000 chips. Harrington and Glenn Hughes will fold to Josh Arie in the small blind. King nine suited. And his patented sloppy call. Over to Al Crutch, bracelet winner in 1996. 
Trucks in the big line, and he decides to call with his ace nine offsuit. Three to the fly, Raymer and Trucks pair their aces. And Josh, who paired his king, checks. Al Crux will check also. Greg Raymer now to ask. That'll seem as a checking time. <laughs> and he comes out with a half a million chips. Josh likes his kings and he'll call. Come on. And Al Crux going all in. And Al Crux makes his stand with his aces, but his kicker is not as good as Raymer's. He's going to have to hope that Fossil Man drops out of this. The family of Al Crux, who have ridden with him on his roller coaster professional poker life. Praise. Oh, Fossil Man wow. going nowhere. Raymer pushes in a million and a half chips, calling Al Crux and putting the heat on Josh Aria. Uh, Josh has that look. It's your party and I'm not invited. And he gets out of the way. So Raymer and Crux to the turn. Greg Raymer, the chip leader, with a huge advantage over Al Crux. And Crux needs a lot of help to stay alive here in the main event. He is a huge underdog. Now the turn card. Three of spades, nothing for Al Crux. And this is what it comes down to for Crux. To stay alive, he will need a nine, or there would be a... Making a bad call, really, just because he was in the big blind. I know ace nine looks pretty, but if someone's raising out of the... Someone's raising. More than likely, they have a better race than that. Nice gesture on Dan Harrington's part for anybody to get to the final table, wading through this field of almost 2,600 players. It's a huge accomplishment. In 1990, Crux finished sixth in the main event. In 1994, he finished fifth. And now he again finishes in sixth and takes home $800,000. Guess what you won? What? Guess what you won? Yeah, yeah but look at the A. Yeah. <laughs> it's not five million, but it's the A. Al Crux goes out in sixth place, takes one look back at the table and the money and what might have been. Five players remaining, each Because of that fucking obligation of the big blind. Dollars. Fuck that. The whole cards of Josh Arie, a couple of threes. He wouldn't go in with a couple of threes, would he? He would go in with one three and a cracker jackpot. And would win the hand. Maybe 225000 from Arie to Greg Raymer. He will call from the button. Dan Harrington guaranteed another million here at the final table. 10-6 offsuit. Yeah, that's a bad hand at blackjack and poker. Over to Glenn Hughes from Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm all in. He's all in line. With about a million and a half chips. Now to Josh Arie, who will fold his three. I think we got a race in that time. The coins on us. Rock and roll. Oh, you again with the ice back in the free turn. Fossil has been calling this situation all day. Big staff poker. Oh. And he does it again. <laughs> Raver with his pair of fives. Hughes, king, queen with his tournament life at stake. You can, you can say you busted everybody but one person so far. I'm the only one who busted so I don't care. Raymer has been the force at this table. Now with a flop, he still leads with his fives. A jack, king, or queen? Give me a jack, king, or queen? You know what he needs to stay alive. Not the ten. Jack, king, or queen? Come on, Naylor, you can do it! You can do it! Give it to me! The river card. Give it to me, Naylor! It's a nine, not a nothing. Glenn Hughes is gone. A million dollars. So Glenn Hughes goes out in fifth place, but a million dollar consolation. Not everybody went away from the main event so happy as we see in this musical edition of The Nuts. <laughs> Is anybody out there rooting for me?
just wasn't quite scary enough, you know what I mean, so probably shouldn't have done that. play a shitty ace there, I want to know if I'm behind, you know, I'll be popping then I'll find out, this is the but, moment for or don't play it, but, I mean, three-handed, is, I know there's not the much blind. there, but, still the going in blind, oh, 
Raymer has done this all day. He can risk about 10% of his chips to try to knock out another player. Call, let's triple him up. David Williams is not going to play. It's a race. So Raymer with his ace queen, Aria with two nine. To the flop. I ain't won one yet. Watch that now. Raymer has run good in these situations. And here comes the flop. Oh! Trip queen. He's played well, but he has really been lucky in these heads-up coin flips. And now Josh will be looking for a nine. The three and the dark is closing in on Josh. A nine and a nine only keeps Josh's World Series hopes alive. The river card. And the World Series is over for Josh Ariane. Raymer did all his work to get here because we're just seeing him just catch everything. So he's not doing any work here. I really like the way David's playing though. I really love him calling that Ray to see that flap in those pockets because you know what? He's at the final table and he knew. How many fucking flops am I going to see? Got to see one. I'm hoping that his people skills catch up to his poker skills. A congratulatory hug from his wife, Angela. Third place, two and a half million dollars for Josh Arie. We are down to heads up play. The money has been brought to the table and these two men are ready to compete for the world champion of poker title and five million dollars. Greg Raymer has been our chip leader throughout most of the main event. Right now he has a two to one chip lead on David Williams, who at 23 could be the youngest main event champion ever, supplanting Phil Hellmuth. This is no limit Texas Hall'em log, but no one from Texas has won this title since Doyle Brunson in 1977. David Williams, a senior at SMU, could be the next Texan to win it. We mentioned Raymer has a two-to-one chip advantage, but if Williams doubles up just once, he'll have the two-to-one advantage over Raymer. David Williams with a king seven bets three hundred fifty thousand to Greg Raymer with a queen jack unsuited. Raymer will call and put on those infamous glasses. If Raymer seals the deal here, Lon, these glasses will be the most popular item in poker rooms across America. Here comes the flop. Ten, three, four. Nobody gets a piece of that. Yeah, that's pretty ugly for both of them, and Raymer will check. David Williams will bet 400,000 chips. He doesn't have much of a hand, but he's going to be aggressive and hope to push out Raymer, who does have less of a hand than David Williams. Fossil comes off, the cards are folded. Well, David's going to have to nickel and dime millions of chips off of Raymer. He didn't get that many on that hand. But David Williams does draw first blood here in this heads-up match at the championship table. Contrasting styles between these two. Raymer has been the more aggressive player. Williams much tighter, and they both made it work. Now, David Williams with an ace four off suit, and he will come out with 300,000 chips. Greg Raymer, first look at his whole cards, two eights. You always love a pocket pair, heads up. Raymer has a lot of chips to choose from, <laughs> and he will make the call only. Raymer with a two to one advantage going to the flop. It comes out four, two, five. David Williams pairs his four, but he still trails Raymer's ace. Williams does pick up an inside straight draw. Raymer checks, and David Williams bets 500,000. He likes his hand. Middle pair, straight draw with the ace. 1.6. And Greg Raymer likes his hand even more. Great read from Fossil Man. He will raise 1.6 million, and he's got the best hand right now. David Williams already reaching for chips. We have seen him work so quickly throughout this tournament, and here he is making the call right away. Williams sees low cards on the board, figured they would not help Raymer. What he doesn't figure is that Raymer does have a high pocket pair. Shirley Williams in her most anxious moment of the whole tournament. Same could be said for Cheryl Raymer. Fossil Man looks at that board and figures the only thing that could worry him is a higher pocket pair for Williams, and he doesn't think he has it. Now the turn card. It's a two, which pairs the board. 
Williams keeps improving his hand, and that's very dangerous because he still trails Greg Raymer. Raymer bets two and a half million. And immediately David Williams calls. Talk about being pot committed. Williams has put a boatload of chips in. In fact, he's put in 40% of his stack into this pot. What a long way David Williams has come to be at this point of the tournament. With 17 players left, he had under 200,000 chips. Raymer had that on day two. Williams a four to one underdog as we go to the river. He can still come up with the best hand if he gets a four for a full house. A three would give him a straight. An ace would give him aces up. River card, another two. Now both players have full houses. Raymer has the better full house. He can only lose if he folds. All in. And he's all in. And that would put David Williams all in. And if David Williams calls, it's all over. Greg Raymer would be the champion. Oh. And Williams will call. The cards are turned. Raymer wins it all. Raymer has bested the biggest tournament field in poker history. He wins the $5 million and is the 2004 World Series of Poker Champion. <laughs> David Williams takes $3.5 million for second place. Someone called him with those eights it was pretty slick. Got him to win. Two years ago, an amateur, Robert Barconi won. Last year, an online amateur. That was quick. This feels like the quickest video I ever made. There wasn't too much to throw in there. But, uh, soak it up for our final table.